but there are people god is raising to become mighty vessels i just saw an anointing rest on you this role in the name of jesus i don't know where you are but i pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of jesus christ welcome to christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages faith-based content prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually remember to subscribe to the channel like the video you are about to watch and comment on it stay blessed hallelujah let's hold our hands and just pray in the spirit just for a minute or two blessed be the name of the lord Blessed be the name of the Lord. Shalaba rukato sekiya daga. Aruto sekiya daga dabala. Pray in the spirit. We are crying for the help of God. We are crying for the wisdom of God. Praise the Lord. Just find a neighbor and pray for that neighbor. Lord, open the eyes of my neighbor. Grant him grace. Grant her grace. Grant them illumination. Are you praying for someone? Find someone and speak a word desperately from your heart. I may not know what he or she is going through, but Lord, let the entrance of your word grant light standing up to the simple in the name of Jesus pray Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we honor you tonight and we ask that you honor the sacrifices of your people. We have gathered tonight, so many connecting from around the world to hear you speak. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you speak. Because if you do not speak, we have nothing to hear. There are many voices, but we want to hear your voice. I pray, O oh God, that your word will build us, perfect us, and bring glory out of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Good to be back home. Please greet someone by your left and right, and then please be seated. hallelujah we've been on a series spiritual stability um, we had to suspend it for over two weeks because of the miracle service and then the graduation last week but we'll just take it off from here thank you Jesus it's always my joy to bring us the Word of God um, not just because it's a call not just because it's an assignment you can serve God and do the work of him, the ministry like an obligation um, but when God gives you a revelation of what this word does you know every time I sit down and I hear the people testify um, many times I just nod my head and I wonder what would have happened to these people 
these families these destinies if they didn't have access to the word of god when god wants to help you he truly sends his word he sends his word he sends his word he doesn't bring his word he sends his word like a messenger and if that word is received and understood in it will be the secret of your lifting and i pray that god will continue bringing beauty and glory out of our lives in jesus name in my life be glorified be glorified in Be glorified. Sing in this place. In this place. Be glorified. Be glorified. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. You just want to say thank you. Thank One more time. You. you get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. This is what this is all about he said hearing is our father glorified john 15 verse 8 when we bear much fruit did you know that all these things we go through is for one reason listen to my message for your glory it's a series you need to listen to it if you don't have it get it get it and listen to it for your glory is with the media after the service you can go online you can download very powerful message because we need to understand what all these sacrifices are for i just thought to myself today i said anyone that gets into ministry just for money or for fame or for titles in today's world is in for a root shock a very root shock if you get into ministry just because you are looking for a cheap alternative for fame loyalty prestige and all of these things you will be in for a root shock ministry is tremendous sacrifice most of the life of a man of god is not seen by the people he blesses most of the life of a serious visionary man of god is not seen by many people it takes a lot of sacrifice to be a blessing but what a joy because you are motivated by the fact that much more than your needs met much more than a vision accomplished much more than your assignment fulfilled is the fact that you are bringing glory to the father, the heart of the father are we together now please i want you to insist that your life will bring glory to god when jesus came and saw a fig tree it was taken from the earth are we together and yet it was not producing fruit for anyone to partake of it jesus didn't advise the tree he didn't say let's leave it after two three years he cursed it immediately 
that means there is something about a life of barrenness that robs God from the glory that is due him so you must not only come here all the time but cry that my Christian life must be fruitful in every ramification I think we should turn that into a prayer father let my Christian life bring you glory let my life produce results are you praying please don't look around pray whatever it will take oh god for my life to produce results let it produce results whatever it will take the sacrifices With my life like a gift to you. Sir King Al Jana, one more time. Yabone na Yabone na kau, sujada ne na kau, Sir Salama, Sir King Al Jana. First Corinthians. Corinthians 15 spiritual stability part 2 first Corinthians 15 and verse 58 Apostle Paul is teaching here and he's challenging us on the need to be stable he says therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast I want you to look up please unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The key word there is to be steadfast, unmovable. Are we together now? The entire, please look up. Let me remind us that the motivation behind this series is captured in the name of the series itself. To give our Christian experience a level of solid stability. Are we together? Because the times that we live in, please listen carefully. If you do not know and understand what you know and believe, then sooner or later your faith will be challenged. There are people challenging everything on earth today. Everything. People are challenging whether Jesus is really the son of Mary, the son of God, challenging whether it was a virgin birth challenging whether he resurrected many people have proposed that from the resurrection jesus went to europe and stayed there married there got old now you would think it's funny until you see the kind of people saying it if you, a poor and weak and naive person is talking you don't listen to him but someone who has intelligence and influence when he talks, you must understand that he's supporting whatever proposition with some kind of facts. So the Bible says, be steadfast. There are preachers today, after preaching a line of thought and a perspective about God, after 10, 20 years, they stand on their altars and don't know what they stand for again. Are we together? Yes. We have to be careful. Because there are all kinds of teachings coming into the body of Christ. Number two, there are all kinds of teachings that should not go out that the devil is trying to take out of the body of Christ. And some of them in the name of old school, new school, you know, whatever it is. 
That means that there is a need, like Apostle Paul is doing here to the church in Corinth, to bring believers to a point of focus and order. It's not enough to be born again. It matters to God that you are stable. Are we together? I, I watched a Jimmy's wonderful son while I was sitting there. I, I remembered when the gentleman was trying to walk. It was such a struggle. He would walk one, two, and fall down. Sometimes I want to help him, and the father will not even mind. He says like that, they will be strong. And now that gentleman is walking and not even thinking about what he's doing. And I said, wow, this is my message. Stability. It's all right to rise and fall, but not forever. You can't continue to stand up if, if a five-year-old child, listen carefully, tries to stand, tries to walk and falls, you know there's something wrong. How many of you have seen a full-grown adult have a problem with stability? Doctors are here and they will tell you something is wrong. And this is what we want to correct. Are we together now? Because you see, in spiritual things, physical age is not necessarily a determining factor. You are going to hear people young and old, some of them your parents, come up with perspectives that may be sociologically acceptable. But let me tell you the truth, is largely antichrist. Do you know why many people, you, you, we're going to continue, I'm just, I'm just giving a little preamble for tonight's teaching. The reason why there is a lot of instability in the Christian work of many people is because there was never conviction from the first place. I can believe a lie for donkey years or because I am part of a system that believes that lie and there are benefits I get from that system, I usually will not question it. Are we together now? And we camp around some of these things and the devil is destroying people. Look at the shock at which people are denouncing their faith. And it's okay for members, but where men and women of God, a man who has represented a spiritual voice to territories for many years, all of a sudden gets up and now says, for instance, gay is right. Are you getting that now? Or sits down and then comes up with some scripture and says, this is this. There is need for stability. Otherwise, our children are in trouble. We are going to teach them nonsense and rubbish. Ask these little children some of the things they are learning in school. You will be surprised to hear what they are teaching them. Are we together? And just because, you know I love the body of Christ, but just because a man goes to church does not mean he's growing spiritually. In today's world, going to church is not enough because church is many things today. Are we together now? People were doing well before they started going to certain circles. It was in those circles their lives got into a level of confusion and nonsense. It is church, for instance, that have made people to beat and drive their wives. It is church, for instance, that have made people to even sacrifice their children. We must be steadfast. There are things that require correction. There are things that require applauds. There are things that require preservation. Are we together now? Be steadfast, immovable. So we said that it matters that we are grounded and productive in our Christian lives. It is lack of spiritual stability that has produced a lot of imbalance and spiritual vacillations. Today, we are loyal to this school of thought. Tomorrow, we are loyal to this school of thought. Next week, we are loyal to this school of thought. The Bible says, even if another angel gets up and preaches another gospel, he said, let him be a cause. That means angels can preach. And if they can preach, they will preach. The same way people have received different things. And then, one of the reasons why this series, I believe, is very important is to be able to create boundaries for this appetite for spiritual knowledge and rema 
there has never been a time in the christian faith where there is hunger we want depth which is all right i mean we just want to dig deep we want to search every greek word every aramaic word every hebrew word we want to read every book find out together all of these things there must be a system that guides people otherwise we are going to get into trouble i have heard preachers preach over the years and by the privilege of the apostolic office i have consulted with many materials even extra biblical materials not for the purpose of error but to be able to understand the spiritual sphere and i've had a lot of messages i can almost quote verbatim i know the book this man this man has read this book this man is preaching from this article this woman is talking from here it is one of the reasons why god grants you the privilege to be vast in your knowledge so you can know where error can come from are we together right now the average young man is more concerned about the scarceness of the revelation that comes from him rather than the truthfulness of it so if i communicate something there there was a gentleman one time i listened to the gentleman and he was so authoritative he claimed he was one of the incarnates of the old prophets so i ordered his materials i ordered lots of his materials he's the young arrogant guy like this and i ordered the entire materials not for cynicism i wanted to go through it and when i went through everything this guy wrote and what he proposed as the correction of the bible i said wow this gentleman is in trouble he needs deliverance and he needs it fast are we together i have read books that i opened the page and i can tell you they copied it from one zodiac book one stargazing book there are many things done in the body of christ that the origin of that operation is scientology some of it is spiritism and mysticism just because god can be a mystery does not mean that anything mystical and spooky is god is god speaking to us now because we must be careful as we as we taught the, and, and you know sometimes we men of god in the name of prophetic instructions and in the name of anything we just do all kinds of demonic things and especially because many christian circles around africa and nigeria have come from a foundation of tradition you know that the christianity in africa is largely it has a little touch of tradition which there are wonderful sides to it in our songs we dance we sing but there are certain practices that are truly rooted in witchcraft number two there are people in the bible who were genuine servants of god but at certain points in their lives they operated by spirits that were not of the christ just because they were people of god but the operation within that context was not of god there are all kinds of things in this bible that's why you must be guided you will read this bible and you will see principles of witchcraft in it that's why you can enter a herbalist shrine and see a bible there he can open it and read this chapter this verse this but it doesn't mean number three it also does don't write i'm still on my preamble just because a, a spiritual operation produce result listen listen just because a spiritual operation produce result does not mean it is of god are we learning because you see the realm of the spirit i have taught you this any dimension higher than the three-dimensional realm can supply a level of advantage into this realm there are people being caught up in the spirit every day and every time and they are not getting caught up necessarily by the power of the holy ghost are we together almost every religion i know 
they have zealous men and women who can tap into powers greater than that which is the human for instance your grandfather and your grandmother how did they cook the yam that they cooked that you didn't see fire under that, that's a spiritual law how did they disappear somewhere and appear somewhere there used to be these kings growing up i used to hear about them and they would tell you they have nine lives some 11 lives come on africa talk to me don't we're not in europe here nine lives they even say cats and animals all these superstitious things and when we get born again we don't allow the spirit of god to renew us well so we carry the backlog of those experiences add anointing and scripture on it put everything and serve it as a menu and while people consume everything they are motivated by the results that come from it spiritual stability we need to be grounded do you know why because error can intimidate someone can stand in error and intimidate you and make you to leave everything that is the epicenter of your conviction most of us now i don't mean to insult but a number of us here i presume are not well traveled both within the country and outside this is why we have not seen the framework of the kind of challenge that can come over our Christian experience. One of the blessings of exposure is that it opens you to other territories alongside the, the sociocultural context of the people. There are lands that you go to that is 2% Christians and you will be surprised to hear what these people know about God, what they know about Jesus Christ. Till today, there is still argument on the body of Christ as to the correct formula for getting born again. You see that? There are many people who say they are born again and they are not born again. It's true. You don't wish getting born again. You don't hope getting born again. You don't assume you are born again. You don't inherit getting born again. There is a principle. And today we have people, we have ordained people deacons, we have ordained people pastors, we have ordained people, we have given people churches to handle. Yet those people themselves, ask them, what is your salvation experience? And the person, what, what kind of stupid question is that? Do I look like a sinner? You see, the, the person is clearly telling you, I don't even know what this thing is. Yet, that is the head of evangelism. Just because people go with a, a, a placard and sing songs and use um, the, the loudspeaker doesn't mean they know what they are doing. And it's the reason why many believers are frustrated. Because many years of lying to yourself, you will get to a point where you say, I'm tired. Look at our children now. They hate church. They hate God. Do you know why? Because they've been asking questions since they were babies. We refuse to answer them. Unfortunately, they don't have the kind of loyalty we have. Growing up for many of us here, you didn't ask for why. You just obeyed. If they give you money, bring it to mommy. You don't say, mommy, why? It's my right. They will beat the living daylight out of you. So if they, you just obeyed. But you ask a little child now. Baby, you should give me. Say, why? Uncle, why? My teacher said every time they should ask why welcome to a generation that needs answers and let me tell you we are not going to continue moving religiously by faith we need a very spiritual and intelligent conviction to support our christian work if you're with me say amen, amen. hallelujah men of god send me text messages every time and sometimes they are like apostle how do you do it i've preached every message i know i've done my best i've read every book I've preached every series. I've preached every whatever. I've done everything. I'm tired. I, I, I literally have to open my Bible few minutes to service, to check. What have I not said before? Is it Matthew 6.33? Is it Revelations? What, what would I not say? 
That's why people just shop messages and bring and preach. Something is wrong with our conviction. Spiritual stability. The last time in part one, we agreed that the first key that we need to create stability in our work with God is an experiential revelation of God. Remember? So point one is an experiential revelation of God. That we need an experience with God. A personal experience. I remember the old folks used to say, have you had a personal experience with God? Right now we are young people and we don't even know what a personal experience is. But the old folks who say, do you know God personally? Have you had a personal experience with God? An experiential revelation of God. And we broke it into A and B. A is through his word. Remember 1 Samuel 3.21 that the Lord appeared again to Samuel by his word in Shiloh. And then number two, number two, through the family of true believers, we agreed that the family of believers can help you to know God. The corporate gathering, the spirit of community among believers. If you are a Christian and you don't have a spiritual family, you will not be stable. Because you need a family of like-minded people to support your belief and to support your conviction. It matters that when people get born again, we don't just isolate and throw them around. It's a different thing if they're in a region where there is no platform where believers can gather. Are we together now? Believers need to support and strengthen themselves. Especially for those who are younger in the faith. They must come in the midst of those who God has helped to gain some stability so that they can watch. They can watch their life. They can watch the way they are growing. It's not just a principle that works for your Christian life. It works for everything. When you watch people who have gone ahead of you, you receive directly or indirectly the system that they have worked with so that it can help your own work too. So number one, through his word. Number two, the family of believers. Number three, through your pain and challenges. That our pain and challenges are gifts. Now I know that um, this is not an aspect that many of us like. It's a very touchy aspect. Don't talk about pain. Don't talk about challenges. But I tell you honestly, I don't believe that God afflicts people. I don't believe that God causes pain and this. But one thing I know is that God can take advantage of every situation in a believer's life to teach him something about God. Are we together now? Yes. Our pain and challenges cause us to need God and to prioritize him. Most times when people are comfortable and there is convenience, there is usually a side effect, whether convenience through prosperity, success or whatever. The side effect is that usually it will dampen our passion and our zeal for God. It will seem to give us a reason to not press into God. Are we together now? It will seem to give us a reason to say, I mean... I don't, whether I pray today or not, there's food in my fridge. Are we together? Whether I pray today or not, my child's school fees is 100,000 and I have 100 million in my account. I mean, what, what is the prayer for? Quite honestly. Whether I pray or not, I have a house, I have cars, I have businesses, I have relationships and connections everywhere. So why pray? Why seek God? Why spend time? So God takes advantage of the periods of pain and challenges because they calm us down. Are we together? They keep us in a position where we can think, we can reason. And God steps in and says, my son, my daughter, now that I've gotten your attention through this, let me show you something about me. Our pains and our challenges help us explore dimensions of God we may have ignored or trivialized. There are things about God that we probably may have ignored because of the comfort and the luxury around our lives. 
But when we go through pain and challenges, they help us to explore those dimensions. I told us again that one of the greatest dimensions of God that pain and challenges birth is compassion. Compassion. The Bible says, for we do not have a high priest, listen carefully, who has not been touched with the feelings. We have very hard people whose heart is like stone. And remember, the Lord said he will give us a heart of flesh. A heart of flesh is not a, a weak, chicken-like, mediocre heart. No. Are we together? The heart of flesh is a heart that can have compassion. <coughs> Excuse me. When you see someone crying, you can say, oh dear, I put myself in this brother's shoes. Oh, I've not eaten a puzzle. So what? Am I the president of this country? Please. No. That's a heart of stone. A heart of what? Stone. There's a reason why it is called stone. Because stone doesn't have feelings. You can pour anything. You can throw it there. And there are many believers. We may look born again. But the reason why we are quick to destroy and tear down others the reason why we are quick to be judgmental and to be presumptuous on people is that we have not learned compassion through pain. There, there, there is a way that you will go through certain things in life. When you look at people, you will just pray for them. Are we together? Yes. I have seen people go through pain. I have seen people go through challenges Sometimes I sit down and wonder, I say, Lord, if I were the one going through this, would I be able to survive? I've seen people go through it. I remember, I think, we were in Abel Kuta early this year, and some two wonderful women, mothers, quite elderly, they came and their combined age, that, not their age, the combined period they had been waiting for a child, for two of them, I think it would be like 52 years combined. Now, it's easy to stand and shout and say, Lord, I will trust you and love you forever. After 20 years, 21 years, 22 years, it's like a man who has been hearing the sound of a gun every day. If they call you and say there are thieves, they should kill me now. What, what, am, am I alive before? They should come and kill me. I'm already dead. Challenges create compassion. And it's one of the ways you can know you are, whether you are a Christian. You know, you will be blessed tonight. There are many wrong parameters that many of us use. The Bible uses love and compassion as a major parameter to measure spiritual growth. Just because tongues are charismatic, miracles, like the gentleman who came to share testimonies. You shake someone and the power that leaves your hand just carries that person up and down. They look and say, boy, is this guy anointed? And you will fool yourself into believing that that automatically produces spiritual maturity. Love. There remained these three. Faith that moves mountains. Hope that maketh not ashamed. And love. He said, but the greatest of the three is love. The day Jesus will come will be surprised. Because those we may think that will stand just because of our charismatism, you will find out that one old mama who cannot speak English, huh? one woman who nobody ever invited, will be the most spiritual based on God's rating. Lord, what did this woman do? I didn't see her on TV. I didn't see her in Koinonia. In fact, I saw Apostle Joshua Selman praying and laying hands for her. And I saw her falling down. And God will say, compared to Apostle Joshua Selman, it's like the sky and the earth. The spiritual levels. If you want to know God and you want to be sincere, listen to this thing I'm teaching you. Are we together? An experiential revelation of God. You must go back crying and say, Lord, give me an experience of you. I want more of you. You've forgotten the song. 
I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus. More of you. It says, In the year King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. This is a man I've been representing. Oh, I've been standing for God. I love God. I, but in chapter 6, when Isaiah saw the Lord, high and lifted up, he said, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell amidst a people of unclean lips. God would have said, ah, that's, that's too much. That's too much humility. He said, carry the coal and touch his mouth. Because it's true. And then he says, whom shall we send? He said, here am I. You've heard that message. This guy had been doing ministry for many years. But now he's saying, send me. So who sent him? It's amazing how you can be doing your thing, claiming you know God. And God is just sitting down there. Claiming that you know God. I know everything about God. And God is saying, well, you may know me, but I don't know you. It's like saying you know Bill Gates. Does he know you? More of you. More of you. More of you. Jesus, more. sing more of you. more of you Jesus more of you key number two we'll start today's teaching now the second key that creates stability in your work with God is establishing foundational values that reflect your convictions about God establishing foundational values write it down that reflect your convictions about God and you may want to add and about life establishing foundational values that reflect your convictions about God and about life apostle I want to be stable in my Christian experience the second key is establishing foundational values Satan attacks great visions by attacking foundational values. Write it down. Please write it quickly. Values. You will never be stable in your Christian life if you do not create values around your life that reflect your beliefs. Values around your life that reflect your convictions about God. Are we together? Spiritual values, intellectual values, financial values. There must be values. This is where I believe that many believers innocently may be missing it. We love God, but somehow we feel that having values that govern our lives, that means that these values coordinate your life to have a level of predictability. What are your foundational values about God? I was in the Anglican for a number of years. And those of you who are in the Anglican here, there's something called Apostles' Creed. Remember? I believe in God. Now, listen. You will think that's just a chant. It's a powerful reminder. It's a compendium of the entire belief system of your faith. I know that sometimes we can make rituals out of it. But now with understanding. You are stating what you believe. You must create your own creed. For God and for your life. What do you believe? What do you not believe? You can't tell me you believe everything. And you can't say you don't believe anything. Even an atheist believes something. 
Koinonia is quiet this night. Thank you, Jesus. I assume that this is a revelation that the Spirit of God is working on our lives and helping us. Foundational values. What do you believe about God? It's better to be in error at least to know I don't believe this. There are people who believe that Jesus is a prophet and that's all. They don't believe he's the savior. It will be easy to save those people because what they believe is clear. Are we together now? There are many believers whose foundational values are vague. Establishing foundational values that reflect your convictions. People should be able to look at you and in an instant know what you believe. It's not by making noise. You see, let me tell you this. And I say it with all honor. In the body of Christ, we talk too much. We talk too much. Yet, in the final analysis, most of what we say are not our foundational values. We talk about kindness. We talk about all of these things and yet we don't believe it. Do you have foundational values? Any person who does not have foundational values in his life will never be great. Will never, I repeat, be great. Ask any great man in life and destiny. Part of the secrets of their greatness is that they have been able to create values, foundational values. What are the principles you have put in your life to support your spiritual growth? Oh, I will grow as the spirit wills. You will never grow. What have you put? Tell me clearly. What have you put to support your spiritual health? What have you put to support your prayer life? You see, and, and, and I don't mean to be sarcastic. Please, if, if I offend you, I'm sorry. But some of this carelessness have come from an exaggerated communication of the grace message. So every time people have to put physical pillars that help them and support them to stand strong they feel guilty because they feel it should be automatic no sir ask any successful person nobody becomes great automatically is that true the people who announced their jump here 270 this they didn't just close their eyes and dreamt and sat down and then stood up they they labored let's respect the sacrifice that creates stability don't just say apostle my prayer life is going down what are your spiritual values that's my question you will never be stable if you don't have values at what point can you punish yourself at what point can you supervise and discipline yourself you are the first mentor of your destiny it is not always about people policing you is there something you can do in your life and say this is not consistent with my values i must be disciplined for this i usually pray every day by so time to so now i slept off i must pay that price in that prayer by having a one full day retreat that's discipline you don't allow weak people fool you and make your spiritual life go down you need tenacity and energy and discipline are we together? Values. I will never come here for koinonia and be stranded of what to preach. Because there is a value around my life that makes sure that by Friday my message is prepared. I look at it. It's not automatic. Tomorrow I'm in Zamfara. Tuesday I'm in Lagos. Coming back for the retreat. All of these programs. These are major conferences. How do you prepare them? And then you have to sleep. And then you have to do other things. It's the reason why many believers are not balanced in their life. They don't have values. You get up anytime. You sleep anytime. Are we together? You can go out of your house without plan. And not discipline yourself for being that careless. You just plan to go and do something in someone's house. You end up spending the whole day. And you don't do a review to punish yourself for that carelessness. It's not, it's, look, do you like what I'm sharing? It looks like you don't like what I'm saying. You, you better like it because this is what makes people great. Say values. Shout it again. 
Some of us need to create values that govern your going out and coming in. Not everywhere is goable. No, sir. My friend has birthday somewhere. He's, he's my friend. Will you die if you don't eat the cake? Can they cut your own and keep for you? We have this, 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 this carnality that make us believe that until you go and establish your presence everywhere. Values. A married man gets up, leaves his house in the morning, returns back by 12 o'clock, and no explanation to the wife and children. Where did you go to? What is your business? Am I not your husband? No, sir, you are indisciplined. No, sir, you are indisciplined. If I don't have anything doing outside, you will not find me outside. No way. There's, you see, it's lazy and unserious people that have all the time to spare. Do you know sometimes, in all honesty, I tell you this. Sometimes I sit down by morning and before I finish preparing all my... It's already evening and I'm wondering, my God, it's already 10. I can be in a, in a position from morning till... Maybe I'll just get up to ease myself or do something. Values. I'm going to have the devotion. What time? There's no time. So there's no system of creating discipline. You get up by 5 o'clock, but you don't have a value in your life for when to seek God. I, I, are you getting what I'm saying now? Even the reading of the Bible, there is no system. You just say, okay, today, guy, 1 Kings 13. No, this, I don't want anything that will scare me. Where is Psalms? Psalms for his message. You look for a simple four verse Psalms and just read and wonder why you are not growing. Why should you be surprised that you are not growing? How many of you have seen some of these evangelists that preach in the park? If they sometimes six in the morning they are there, they will do it for more than 20 years. Early in the morning, as soon as you are traveling, you will see them there. They are preaching. Do you have values for your life? Many of us are not bad, but we are receiving the result of bad people because our values have not edited our lives enough to allow good things come to us. Are we together? One of our dear ladies was, was, was sharing and, and sent me a text today about some, some people that stay in, in their compound or so, smoking all kinds of things and harassing them. I said, look, if nothing is done here, find a place immediately. We'll support you to find a place and get out of that place. Are you that desperate for your growth and your destiny? Have values. Have values towards money. Have values that govern your character. Compromise. You can tell yourself, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace. Anytime I see a great man, I will never beg him for money. It's a value. I will find out from him. If he blesses me, that's all right. So if you see a multi-millionaire come, your values. Are you seeing that now? There is that itch, but your values. But there are others, as soon as they say, ah, your boys are here. You see, you don't have values. And anybody that does not have a, a spirit that does not have control is like a city without walls. Many believers are not stable because we lack values. You cannot define what are the values that I live by. It's better to be sincerely wrong, but at least that you set values. I have a value. I have a spiritual value over the man I can marry. Or the man I can go out with. Or the woman I can go out with. When you see a lady that loves God with all her heart. You know, sometimes it doesn't cease to surprise me. And then with all the spirituality. Here comes this, this uh, uh, brother that, that is, is not. You know that this guy is far from the cross. He's even far from, uh, what's the name of that place where Jesus died? Golgotha. Far from it. And here comes the lady smiling and asking whether it's the will of God. The situation there is lack of values. 
if you have values you already know i can't be this selfish children are going to come from this union and i'm going to submit to this man i don't want a man that will make me bring forth children whose destinies will be destroyed if you are honest and you are serious you will think about your children not just yourself it's not all about my i love you i love you my comfort you are thinking children will come from this what if i start praying with my children and the man comes and says, no prayer in this house what happens to you we now begin to blame god say values what of friends what is your standard for having friends in your life there are married people who have bad friends ungodly friends that keep causing trouble for their homes are we together values spiritual values what is the parameter that qualifies a man to have access to your mind or do you just listen to everybody just because they are talking what must be present in a preacher for you to listen what of finance some of us don't have values at all we lie anyhow and it doesn't matter me i'm both old and new school i've told you depending on what is old and depending on what is new there are things we call old school that is just is is very new is latest school just because it's ancient does not mean it's outdated let's be careful when we define some of these parameters that continue to destroy our lives some of us love god but when it comes to let me bring money out when it comes to money look up please christians look up when it comes to money you are praying in tongues someone just says uh go and buy me polish how much is polish let's say 200 naira just because you saw the money god goes places because money has entered your hand just because the person does not ask you for change you will come and drop the polish and go away with the change you don't have values how about this big man what will he do with 50 naira is it your money is it your money sir you know once in a while the bible said thy rod and thy staff they comfort me so once in a while god just draws this thing out to just straighten our lives some of you think these things are silly are we together now what is your value to regulate your social media whatever what is watchable and what is not watchable don't say i'm an adult you have a mind <laughs> right now we expose our little children to things they should not watch and they ask us questions we cannot answer are we together values I'm giving you an assignment tonight that when you go back please spell out very clearly what do I stand for and what do I not stand for with respect to God and with respect to my destiny some of you have done well having values for your spiritual life but you have not done well for your destiny you don't have values that govern your destiny in the name of Jesus I will never be lazy whatever it will take I will do well value in one minute i'd like you to cry to god and say lord have mercy upon me and give me the grace to have values and boundaries in my life lift your voice and pray are you praying it's a hard message but it will bless you lift your voice lord i have tolerated laziness in my life lord i've tolerated carelessness in my life Lord, I've tolerated all kinds of, of things that should not be in my life. I've tolerated pride. Lord, I, I declare I want to go far in life. Please pray. You're not praying. Pray. Oh, apostle, but I'm all right. I'm holy. I don't sleep around. I don't drink. I don't smoke. What of the values of character? The values of empathy. Please pray. It's the reason why some of us have never risen. 
You have never seen a need to discipline yourself because of carelessness. You must be able to have a way to say, sit down. This is not right. This is good. I have to discipline myself. I spoke rudely. No, one of my values is honor. I was out, I lost my temper and I spoke rudely. I demand if without supervision. Lord, I receive grace to supervise myself. I receive grace. I receive grace. Are you praying? I receive grace. Shalabakata brada kete baladaba. Jakate kata barakato so kata. spiritual values intellectual values that i will never go to bed till i've added something to my mind is a covenant that you make with yourself it's a core value no matter how sleepy you are you wake up and you say i must improve myself every day by self-supervision you are a pastor by thursday or friday Every message to preach must be ready, no matter what it is. Guiding principles. If I finish eating, I must wash the plate there and then. Every day I must sweep my house, whether it is clean or not. Guiding principles. When I get up in the morning, the first thing I would do is play worship and read my Bible before browsing, before watching a movie, values. There must be boundaries in your life. I'm a music minister. If I wake up every morning, I must rehearse. No day will go without me rehearsing because I'm going far. I want the nations to bless me. As a man of God, I must pray at least in tongues one hour every day, two hours, whether I like it or not. It has nothing to do with whether I'm strong or not strong. I may be sleeping. I will carry my mattress outside. That one hour, I must cover it. I will put an alarm clock and pray. I must study five chapters every day. One chapter every day. Come what may. I discipline myself. Please pray. Lord, help me to set values in my life. I'm tired of living my life anyhow, praying anyhow, visiting friends anyhow, watching anything anyhow. There has to be boundaries in my life that coordinate me for the purpose of greatness. It says, every man that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. You will never be great being careless hallelujah listen listen there are people here the last time they read a book was last year the last time they read a book was last year you buy all kinds of books and pile them and continue to lie to yourself and others that you have so many books and then there's someone that reads one book per week look let me tell you please God is not unjust. If you are not willing to do this thing right, it will not work. Are we together? There are many preachers that see what God is doing in, in some of our lives and get angry. They don't know the sacrifice. These are my boys that work for me. Ask them. I, I don't think I have ever gone to bed. Not, not in the last, I don't know the last time. I cannot remember the last time I went to bed earlier than 12 midnight. Not for any reason. Even if I have a flight to catch in the morning. Please, let's not mock ourselves. They say, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. If you are not willing to pay the price, don't insult those getting the result. Because God is just. He's rich unto all. Are we together? An average message, anybody that is serious, an average message takes hours to prepare. You don't want to know how many materials are consulted for just one simple message, as you call it. What of the prayer on it? Oh Lord, bless your people. 
Oh Lord, increase your people. A friend was trying to call me this morning. I told him I'm praying. I will call you when I finish. I finished around afternoon and I called him. He said, since that time? And I told him, I said, what do you think the anointing is? A charm? What do you think the anointing is? A charm? I considered getting a chef years ago. But I said getting a chef would be a waste of time. How many times do I eat in a day? I would just be giving free money to some and cooking food and wasting it. But how many times do you eat in a day? Four times in the morning, between morning and 12. <laughs> Another five times. Someone has to really tell you the price of greatness so that you will see and know and if it's too scary for you to get there, then respect the person who gets there. Because we have this honor for success in this nation. We see people pay such huge price and we trivialize it as though they were just lucky. You are just lucky to be anointed. You are just lucky to have a crowd. You are just lucky. It's just that God just gave you intelligence. There is a price. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost, but he still went about. He went about. It was the doing good that was the anointing. The going about was his strength. He went about. That's why many people have a lot of spare time, no values. They sit down morning till night gossiping, talking about politics. Then they move to men of God. Then they move to farmers. Then they move to what is happening in the north. Then they move to Boko Haram. It's five, ah, no food today. And that's how they spend their day. And before you know it, there are children around you asking you questions. Mommy, why are we like this? He says, it's the will of God. No, sir, it's not the will of God. If you are a man of God here and your life is not on fire, there is an explanation. Don't you ever say it is the will of God. Find out the price it takes to be great. There is a price. You want to be stable in your spiritual life? The price is establishing foundational values. There are things I must do every day, no matter what happens. It doesn't matter whether we are fasting. It doesn't matter whether there is koinonia. It doesn't matter whether I'm traveling the whole day. If for any reason I miss it, I'll be lying to tell you I get it 100 over 100. But if I don't get it, I pay that price. I will pay that price. If I have a time for prayer and for any reason, I'm a night person because I like, I like a lot of, um, it's been like that, the way God trained me. Most of my prayer is in the night. You can live with me for one year and accept God chooses to. You may never, maybe it's just the sound you may hear, but you may never really catch me. You will think I don't pray because I love the night. Everything that can distract has gone. I off the light and pray with all my heart. I don't pray and then I check phone and quickly say a message has come. That's not prayer. You are playing. You put your heart in this thing. Do you know the spirits that attack you when you are about to be great? Do you know the level of attack per day that comes upon a man of God? You don't want to know. It's more than just good preaching, my brothers and my sisters. Please, I want you to make up your mind. I don't want to dwell here. We'll, we'll move to other things. But make up your mind that you're going to have values. There are friends, you've heard me say it. Send them a text and say, my brother, I found out that every morning, 6 o'clock, you come and wake me and you sit down. I don't mean to offend you, but please, don't be offended if I don't open the door for you again. There are there are people in the name of friends. I'm not, relationships are important. But there are friends that are not godly at all. Six o'clock, they have knocked your door. Some are even Christians. Bros, are you there now? You collected that movie, right? And you want to pray. But you are too, many of you don't like feeling bad. Some of us who are already used to persecution, we already, we have gotten the whole thing. But some of you want a good name, even at the expense of your spiritual life. I don't want anybody to say anything wrong about me. And someone comes to your house. You are praying. You stop the prayer. You close the Bible. And then you slot the, the movie. And the person is just, he's there till one o'clock. Invites his friend the next day. 
and then the third friend they invite is a smoker who does not respect you or your values you come into a house you are seeing the picture of a dove you are seeing the picture of jesus you are seeing the picture of a poster it shall be well and you still sit down with cigarette shamelessly but you are afraid if i drive this one now may god give you courage to send them out quickly Don't let anybody call you at the fruitful part of your day just call you where are you i'm in the office ah what are you doing i just thought about you oh god bless you thank you i'll call you later no 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 i want to talk now there's jesus jesus day that's why we never become great we don't know that this thing keeps adding god is a just god you don't sit down and cross your legs around and then you want god to keep sending you nations no i returned back yesterday by evening as soon as i returned removed my clothes i didn't even rest i got straight to work i don't know what time i slept this morning i woke up later i, I slept maybe around it, it shouldn't be earlier than 4 30 and by 10 i was awake till now my eyes touching the bed to sleep again maybe at least three o'clock in the morning yet i have a ministration in zamfara Do you love your destiny that much? Or are you just singing songs about it? Behind everything that works is someone making it work. Did you hear what I said? Behind everything that works is someone making it work. It doesn't mean I don't joke. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm an antisocial person. But there are people who at the level you are in life, you don't have the luxury for play. I can decide to take a whole day off to relax. I think I, 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 I've, I've worked enough to merit it. But somebody that is just starting in life, say, Apostle is resting. You too, you are resting. We only rest on the seventh day. And on the seventh day, God rested. You are resting on day one. It's an error. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh, cometh. When no man will walk again. Please sit down. God bless you. Thank you, promise. So the second key to creating a st stability in your life is to establish foundational values. An attack on your values is an attack on your destiny. Satan does not attack you by attacking you. He attacks you by attacking your values. Number three, let's hurry up for the sake of time. Mm. What is the third key to creating stability in your work with God? Receiving the ministry of the body. The third key, you want stability in your Christian life. You must receive the ministry of the body. We'll have a long reading. First Corinthians chapter 12. We are reading from verse 12 till I ask us to stop. 12 down about 26. Actually, the whole text is the, is the entire from 12 to the end. But we'll read down maybe 25, 26. Now, please look up. We are creating stability in our lives. We are going to read. For as the body is one and hath many members. Paul is teaching now. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. Paul is teaching about the body now. Next verse. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Another word, Anglicans, Pentecostals, Presbyterian, whatever it is. Whether we be bond or free, we have all been made to drink of what? One spirit. Say one spirit. It's one of the foundational doctrines, the doctrine of baptisms. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. For the body is not one member, but many. Now, Paul is teaching something here. He's teaching that this body we call is not just one member, but many. Okay? If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? He's asking a question now. 
and if the ear shall say because i am not the eye i am not of the body is it therefore not of the body if the whole body were an eye where then is the hearing powerful paul is an intelligent man imagine if the whole world was koinonia you would think it would be excellent if the whole world were koinonia where will be the miles moon rose that we will receive the teaching and the revelation of the kingdom from let me tell you this one of the manifestation of error and pride how you know you have deviated in a way that demands deliverance and repentance is indoctrinating yourself to believe that your ministry or your person is a sufficient representation of all that is needed to present the fullness of Christ. Any man, any woman, man of God, businesswoman, whatever, if you ever conceive that thought, it's a sign that your life is under attack. If the whole body were koinonia, where then will be the Benny Hins, the Kenneth Copelands, the redeemed church, and all these places? My goal is never to make every ministry koinonia. My goal is to contribute my quota as far as the privilege of God's grace has been given to me to supply my own contribution to the overall body. I have said this again and again and again. I thank God for the privilege of balance. I am not a balanced man of God just because I'm independently sound. I'm a balanced man of God because I have a heart that is open to the body. There are dimensions that are not shown me and I never would have seen no matter how close I am with God. But my genuine opening to the body has given me room to be able to look and say wow so there is something like this it's not been captured in my experience let me study it if the whole were hearing where then is the smelling all these parts have distinct functions 18 but now god had set the members every one of them in the body as it has placed him believers are you seeing this now your life will never be stable if you are imbalanced doctrinally and we men of god sadly and and very 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 i say it with all due respect because of our individual complexes we carry our complexes that are as a result of our esteem of ourselves and and add our complexes into the context of ministry and make it look like it is god that is imagine that i sit down now i say don't listen to any man of god if any koinonia person listens to any man of god aside from me you are not being loyal that's devilish it's a terrible doctrine i have a responsibility to guide you i have a responsibility to teach you i have a responsibility to mentor you is that true but never to sit down and lie to myself and lie to you that in myself as Joshua Selman, I contain all the dimensions that are in God. I travel around and I see dimensions in God that sometimes I stand and I say, wow, this is amazing. And I sit down to learn, my God, I never knew this. Is the reason why I love the body of Christ. Don't carry that bias that just because it is not your church or it is not your pastor, every other person who is not you is a devil. And many men of God, we are victims of this. And the danger is that we are subconsciously raising people after that paradigm. We're talking about the church in Nigeria. I think it was with Ejimi some, some weeks, remember? And we're discussing and, and I was sharing with him how this button of ministry came down right from the Samuel Ajayi crowders and I was just showing him the spiritual history of the church in Nigeria to this present time celebrate the body we are perfect as a body as individuals we may have our own limitations we have our own pride and prejudices and immaturity here and flesh here and imperfections here. I know, I understand. 
our levels of alignment to the spirit are not the same our levels of hunger and passion for god is not the same so the results will not be the same however however it matters i was living i was living asaba yesterday and there was a dear man of god he was part of the people that came i was already late hurrying to go and catch the flight and then he requested that i just come step my feet in his church and pray i don't know him from anywhere and i said oh dear this man let me do my best and at least stand and pray for him i know what god has put in my own life i know what will happen to his church when i pray for him so it's not just because i am anointed i know that his church will never be the same you see that one of the reasons why i love dr miles monroe you hear me talk about him so much not just because he's the one who mentored me in the area of the kingdom but when i started out in life and ministry i wrote letters to several men of god now i'm not offended i'm not saying they are bad because you write a letter to me i may not even get it it's, it's not the best but i mean i do my best to make myself accessible but sometimes it's just not possible so i totally understand it's not from a standpoint of sarcasm i wrote letters to several people several ministers just telling them my encounters and just trying to leverage on them to make sense of my life for me and among there were different versions of replies i believe but miles munro wrote me handwritten handwritten and encouraged me and shared certain things signed it with his own signature and sent it from bahamas to zaria and i got it i said lord i want to be like this man whatever will make a busy man like this the largest church in bahamas a pastor of pastors an advisor of presidents to have the time to send to a young guy trying to gain his balance spiritually that's the reason why all these prayer groups and fellowships and the young people some of you here every time they come and say apostle this is what we are doing it doesn't matter whether they are in error or not i love them and i embrace them because when i was at that level there was no one close enough everybody who could listen were too far and then they continue to say young boys are rebellious but who is the person that can listen and can pat their back there is no group and no association and no group of gentlemen and women that i will not love them and hug them if there is something that needs correction i'll say adjust this 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 and just love them and bless them i made up my mind that as god lifts me i will never be too far that i cannot bless and help the people coming you must receive of the body and if they were all one member where were the body we're reading to verse 26 let's hurry up but now are they many members yet but one body everybody say one body say it one body many members and the eye cannot say unto the hand i have no need of thee nor again the head to the feet i have no need imagine if God started doing all those encounters, producing dramatic encounters, I was seeing the saints of old, having visions with them. Yet I was poor, I was broke, and everything I did was poor and was broke. Imagine if those anointed in the body to supply that dimension, I rejected them. That rejection would have reflected in ministry today. It would be an anointed ministry with baskets all around forcing both your neck and your hand to cough out every money in your pocket today we are able to walk in this level of integrity by the grace of god because we have received the supply of those dimensions i never started my journey with god knowing anything about finance it was the spirit life encounters visions dreams the word prayer faith i mean everything just throw yourself spiritually anything that had to do with excellence administration leadership i didn't know anything about it but bless god for the body bless god for the body nay much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary there are ministries in the body that are not on tv 
there are ministries in the body that are hidden and silent and the bible says those ministries are also important and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable everybody say less honorable say it again less honorable look up please this bottle of water was kept by someone imagine that your assignment on earth is to always keep water for joshua selman you will look and think that just because this is not it's not you are not shining so you see the guy who is holding the mic and preaching and talking i'm shouting right now and somebody is falling under the anointing outside and say, wow this guy we can think based on human parameters and our ways of measuring things that the person who is doing this ministry is of lesser honor no hear what the bible says upon this we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more what abundant comeliness that means your heart that you cannot see can stop your leg that you can see from walking your brain that you cannot see have you seen a madman whose body is complete yet he's mad because something that should not be touched in his head was touched say amen just because one one molar has a problem an adult it will force your eyes to shed tears it will force your legs to run around because you are worried just because one tiny teeth has a problem that means there are ministries we are ignoring in the body what this woman who has just a small prayer house she just prays for people and writes the names of men of god let's leave this sofa head woman let's go to koinonia where things are happening and you leave the woman whereas you don't know joshua selman is standing today because that woman is kneeling down you see that oh lord help him let the revelation be fresh upon him lord help him there are people who pray for me as a ministry i'm not talking they they believe they are called by god thank god for the prayer department but there are people i know some of them they believe that their assignment in life is to intercede for me and i don't joke with those people when people send me a text and say apostle i just prayed for you no matter how busy I, I do my best to at least if i cannot sow into their lives i cannot pray for them or i pray back for them or just try to do something to make them um feel honored for what they have done 24 for our comely parts sensitive parts have no need but god had tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which which lacked 25 that there should be no chism in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another prayer ministry care for the prosperity ministry prophetic ministry care for the apostolic ministry are we together leadership ministry care for the man of god who all he knows is how to heal the sick and preach he doesn't know how to put an excellent organogram make your ministry available provided he's ready to receive it the bible says but as many as received him meaning he can be rejected there are churches you go to you see the power of god but there's a lot of misbehavior i can be preaching now sam come i can be preaching and a member will just run and come and touch my head and go back to sit down what kind of indiscipline is that are we together all in the name of excitement no the house of god is not a, a cinema uh, uh, hall neither is it a place for movies and circles it's a place where lives are changed when you see that it doesn't stop the power of god from flowing but you will know that a dimension of the ministry of the body has not been received or some i'm preaching and someone squeezes one thousand naira and throws it to me is that how to sow is that how you sow corn <laughs> you sow corn with respect and dignity ask any farmer you throw maize like that you don't come after four months to get a harvest say in the name of jesus i receive the ministry 
of the body of Christ say in the name of Jesus I love the body of Christ and I receive the diverse ministries of the body let me advise every man of God here you are a pastor you are a spiritual leader of any sort never use your pulpit as a platform to tear another man's ministry I repeat never use your pulpit as a platform to tear another man's ministry because you are sowing a seed that will grow must grow I don't want anybody talking against me and talking against anybody serving here and I will not sow that seed I will challenge wrong doctrines but I will never find myself stand and tear down see imagine for instance um, um, just come Sam imagine come imagine that these guys are laboring and doing their work and just because of one or two mistakes in their lives I just come and push everybody aside to show that I am Joshua Selman I'm destroying them what does this guy go and tell his wife our ministry is going down why Joshua Selman tore down your ministry this guy I tear people down and I stand you don't have to cut the head of people to show you are tall if you are tall you are tall please I want you to learn this that in the name of Jesus you will zip your mouth from talking against men of God talking against their wives talking against churches don't do that are we together now don't go around ah, this man of God's wife this man of God this one now we are not perfect people in ourselves it's true and different ministries have their different dimensions of God uh, and there are the truth is that there are things to correct in almost every ministry there is something to adjust there is something to correct so the observations may be justifiable but it's still not enough reason to tear people I have preached everywhere from Anglican to Catholic to Cherubim and Seraphim to um, Presbyterian, Equa, Cochin, Pentecostal. I mean, just name it. I'm for the body. I love you. I never show any, where are you? Are you for who? Are you for us or no? I would not do that devilish thing. In this ministry, there are people who are a, a product of different churches and different places now let me tell you this you don't have to agree with a man or a doctrine to love are you getting what i'm saying now it, just because i accept the body does not mean i accept every doctrine there are doctrines that are obviously wrong i have my convictions there are doctrines that you will never hear from this pulpit because as far as the responsibility of your spiritual growth as given to me under God is concerned, I will do my best to present to you the most accurate and balanced portrait of spiritual truth. However, I will not just go and meet someone who maybe has a problem with the baptism of the Holy Spirit or has a problem with deliverance or has a problem with healing and then fight the person. Don't make that happen. This is one of the mistakes that I see happening, especially among younger ministers, because we are all young. Younger ministers. Sometimes I look at them and I see them training themselves to resent. Oh, you are Anglican. No, I won't. I'm serious with God. You are what? You are from. Mm, don't do that. I love people regardless of if i don't agree with you on many grounds when we meet we discuss the areas we agree we agree about the growth of nigeria we agree about the fact that this country must go places we agree about the fact that the poor and the needy need help these are areas that we agree on why bring a sensitive and touchy area it's one wisdom key you may receive when you are in the midst of people who don't exactly agree with you, be careful. You may want to bring subjects that are generally agreeable. Are we together? Is God speaking to us? Thank you, guys. Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to receive the ministry of the body. 
I'm a product of many anointings. And by the grace of God, these anointings have contributed to making my life what it is today. When I travel to different places and people try to honor me as against other preachers in that land, I, I come against that, that honor immediately. Don't do that. Don't honor me at the expense of other men of God. I've shared with you my story how that once upon a time I traveled to a particular place for administration and um, the media people or so came to do an interview for me. And you know, they were making it look like the men of God in the city were just doing nonsense. Now that apostle has come, I said, no, 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 don't do that. I have only come as a contributor to strengthen the hands of the men and the women there. Imagine how healing it will be for you as a pastor when you hear another pastor say, I've come to strengthen your hands. Years ago, when we wanted to organize a crusade uh, in, 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 in Massacre, I remember when the pastors were doing, you know, I was presenting it before the PFN there. Many of the pastors were feeling, look, they said, some of them said, if you are coming to open a church, just say it. Because many people have done what you have done. They will come and say crusade. We will labor and give our speakers. As soon as they finish, they just appoint your keyboard. This is now your usher. The other person is now a prayer band member. You just share people's members. Say, just tell us. And I laughed. I said, no, I'm for the body. I don't hate the body. And that's what we did there. Throughout that crusade, it was honor for the body all through. Praise the Lord. You must love the body of Christ. I love Equa, I love Cooking, I love Baptist, I love Living Faith, I love MFM, and name them. I love everyone. For as long as there is one person in that circle that names the name of the Lord, regardless of the individual imbalances, if God were to walk just on our perfection, then all of us will not have a ministry. Every house, in a great house, regardless of the vessels, the house is still great. Are we together? God bless you. Number four. The fourth key to creating stability in your work with God is to engage the practice of personal retreats. Hmm. The practice engage the practice of personal retreats personal retreats take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Mm. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28. We're reading to 31. The grand secret of spiritual stamina the practice of retreats a retreat is a time i think um what's the message now it should have been the last message for last year let me tell you this it's a shame and i'm very disappointed in this ministry if you are a worker and you are a faithful member in this ministry and we call some sermons and you look as if you are not aware it's a sign that you are not serious with god Quite honestly. Are we together? There are messages that must be in your archive. Because life will make you demand them. 
Retreats. Retreats. A retreat is a time away from your normal activity. A time set apart to seek the Lord. To spend time with the Lord. Retreats are times of personal appraisals. Retreats are times of correction. Retreats are times of empowerment. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? The creator of the ends of the earth fainted not. So the Bible is talking about fainting here. It says, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Next verse. He giveth what? Please talk to me, Koinonia. He giveth power. That means when people faint, what do they lack? Power. The spiritual capacity to stand. He giveth power to the faith. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. That means there is a reason why people go down. Power is missing. Strength is missing. It says that if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. There is a way life can push you that will force you to turn aside. You need a retreat. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Next verse. But they that wait upon the Lord. To wait upon the Lord is not just to fast. You can fast and sleep. You are not waiting upon the Lord. Hello? To wait upon the Lord demands seriousness and intention. The best way to wait upon the Lord is to fast. But even if you eat, eat light enough to allow your spirit. There is, there is a relationship between the busyness of your mind and food. Once you have choked yourself with food, even, even medical people tell us, by the time you eat, I mean, if you take a lot of food, you find out your body begins to hibernate. You want to sleep. So sometimes you will need that space. There are many believers. It's amazing. As far as I'm concerned, and now I, I, I stand to be corrected, but a Christian who does not fast is not a serious Christian. I'm not talking of a special corporate fast. There is no week in my life I don't fast. Impossible. Impossible. As impossible as saying Satan died for my sins. Are we together? Could it be that your belly is the reason why your destiny is closed? Yes, sir. Could it be that you have not held on to the four horns of the altar in a retreat? There are men who have not encountered true power because they are not ready for it. When you get angry with life, that door will open. Oh, it's just that many people are too casual about life. Lord, why is my destiny locked left, right, and center? You close the door. No food. If God can grant you the grace, no water. You stay there. You lock the door. Lord, you have anointed me as a man of God. What is happening? My church is not growing. My life is not growing. Lord, something is wrong. What is wrong with my music ministry? Nobody is placing demand on my grace. While people are sleeping in the night, you are rolling from left to right praying. Tears coming out of your eyes. You are crying your destiny with passion. Lord, open the gates of my destiny. I'm the firstborn. I'm the lastborn out of 15 people. 30 people in my lineage. Nobody has risen. There has to be a way out. What is that yoke, oh God? Why, why is it that 11 ladies married in my lineage? None of them has joy. Zakatos kapata. He said, bring forth your strong reasons. Believers don't pray. Believers don't get angry enough. There is what we call holy anger. It's true. That you just sit down somewhere and say, Lord, something is wrong. Something is wrong. 
something is wrong our only brother that got a job died two months my sister married a rich man she died with the man lord what is wrong there has to be an explanation you sent an angel to come and give Daniel understanding. Where is that angel? He must come and meet me in this room. You are praying. There is a way you can be angry. Sleep will not near you. You organize vigils now. In two hours, people are sleeping. And sometimes it's even the pastors that are sleeping. What sort of indiscipline is that? How many hours is a vigil yet the same person can stand by the road and talking for the same time for the vigil it's a spirit slumber is a spirit pray inquiry prayers lord everything i put my hand in doesn't work i entered five relationships in one year they all died what is all this someone said he will give me a job it didn't work lord render heaven speak to me i need an explanation when job called upon the name of the lord and he meant business god came he said open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things let me tell you this if you want to rise in life I want to give you a very big advice it's not a doctrine please maximize your night times i repeat maximize your night times only weak people snore their entire life through the night the night is when destiny destiny things shift things in the spirit ask the doctors most patients die in the night You are at a sensitive period in your life you need to be serious it doesn't have to be a departmental retreat lord a three-day fast i need to find answers i need to find answers off your phone remove the battery and throw it and keep it somewhere don't let that addiction will you die if you don't own your phone for three days will you die if you are not on social media we make it look as if these things if we off them we will die what if they steal the phone and for one week you don't have a phone and you get down on your knees lord is me and you here no friend no koinonia no apostle you if you have the resources and god grants you grace you can go to one of these quiet hotels somewhere just book a room five thousand and close yourself there lord you have said many things about my life i'm tired of confusion lord i'm tired i believe this last week now i don't even know what i believe again i just finished a series on deliverance and now i'm even doubting the whole deliverance thing again lord you have to help me and you pray let me tell you god comes when we take him serious did you hear what i said god comes when we take him serious for as long as you play games with god you will never have him come there is a mystery to an encounter you must give it a life and death seriousness when koinonia was going to start three days before koinonia or, or thereabout before koinonia will start i went on a retreat lord everything that i've put the blueprint you reveal to me is it intact and if god ever spoke to me and said this koinonia thing you're on your own i will close it i never do anything in this ministry and in my life a major decision without taking out time to pray you ask the leaders they know sometimes we will discuss something and they just come back the next few weeks and they find me keep quiet over it if i keep quiet over an issue god has not spoken i would die there until his voice comes we don't respect the voice of god that's why we continue to move in circles in our lives holy spirit you are welcome fill this temple with your presence
Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Yes. Fill this temple with your presence. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. Sing it one more time from your heart. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. You want to make a serious decision in your life who to marry and all you are doing is browsing facebook you are about to marry a devil you want to relocate from nigeria or abroad and you think it's not a reason for a retreat should i move should i do and you browse advantages of staying in nigeria google enter that's your destiny we are talking about there are defining moments please hear me not every decision in your life is equally important lord should i start a church or continue like this you don't make that kind of decision sitting down and drinking coffee you lock yourself and say flesh give way i need to hear something for the destiny of millions fasting does not kill a vigil does not kill my brothers and my sisters conquer spiritual laziness and receive the grace to stay until something comes upon your life lord my ministry is not stable men are coming in men are going out what is all this today we have 10 members tomorrow we have 20 members and the holy ghost comes to you and says son there is a level of power and grace you need they will not come and sit down for nothing and you stay there one hour becomes two hours and the spirit of god is watching your seriousness two hours become three hours and the holy ghost says this lady is not joking i have seen there is a boundary you cross in prayer that even god knows you are no longer joking you are praying praying from your heart lord you have called me into a ministry of signs and wonders where are the evidences why is my life barren why do i stand to minister and the word of god is not coming with fire what could be wrong oh god i have read every book i have listened to every man of god and all of a sudden he comes with his glory and says my son there is a way ministry is done it's a revelation you hear every great man tell you of their encounters run away from a man who does not have an encounter of the secret place you don't copy everything there are things you must get by yourself in the secret place we were preparing we we're going to pray shortly before koinonia will start you know i was already sensing in my spirit okay maybe let's go and start ministry in abuja or somewhere there or just or whatever it is you know koinonia was already on and i just sensed in my spirit and then i was having a retreat towards the end of the year and i just prayed and prayed and slept i didn't even know i had slept and all of a sudden i had a dream and in that dream i saw a plane lift and on that plane it was written e and i it was leaving zaria to abuja listen just when it was about to land in abuja it crashed when i got up i said lord i get the message the time has not come i would have stupidly gotten up just because somebody wants to sponsor you does not mean god is in it please hear me the times we live in require keenness of sensitivity one brutal mistake you make can destroy your testimony forever i would have done that now and you would have been surprised what have you taken for granted in your life a gentleman said he likes you you didn't pray you just smiled i think he's the one even samuel saw eliab and said surely this is the lord's anointed god said no 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 no
if you love God and you want to go far please get this message and listen to it you become stable in life when you practice retreats periodically there are times I go for retreats and I say Lord am I are the messages I'm preaching in Koinonia is it consistent am I am I leading the people in the right way and God tells me sometimes you see me tell you that God gave me messages here messages most of these messages you see commanding results that they talk about and all of this the names the lifter of men that message has blessed I was lying down on the bed praying and the next thing I saw on my pillow the lifter of men that's how I saw the message you would think people are lying if you are not a man of the secret place please we are spending too much our of our life in the open a great man of God most of your life should be indoors you are preparing for an extraordinary life sister God has told you you are going to marry a great man of God cat walking around is not going to bring you the marriage you go back Jacob's kapata Leketeko's kamata. you are praying and building your spirit to carry the load of ministry is not, it's not a wheelbarrow you are pushing you are carrying destinies on your head there are many of us because you don't have the spiritual stamina for the level you are praying for God will never take you there he will take you there and you can die in one month because of the kind of attack and persecution that comes at that level there are even finances this prosperity thing you see is warfare prosperity is warfare oh god make me a millionaire and god says son you are too innocent you don't know the attack that happens when you have money is god speaking to us this message is calling us a restoration back to retreats some of you you have not had any retreat this year next week is our workers retreat thank god but much more than a workers retreat let me tell you the truth if there is anyone who has been connected to this ministry for a while and you cannot go on a personal retreat you are not growing you are not growing no matter how busy you think you are you may not have the money to book a hotel or a place and by hotel you don't book a hotel where they are playing music in the night and clubbing you have, you have you have you have ruined the whole retreat find a place alone walk around oh god show me what am i not getting well what am i getting and you are walking and talking like a madman you think you are talking alone one hour you are talking by yourself this is what will happen lord this ministry you are giving me this anointing this healing anointing and you stand and the power of imagination begins to come you are standing and seeing yourself ministry and you are sensing a time will come the climate starts to shift his majesty is coming make way for him all of a sudden he can come there two three hours you may not know what is happening until the next time you hold a mic when you hold a mic you will see the fruit of your retreat ordinary praise the lord you are going to see people getting healed and you say what is this like the gentleman who was saying you don't just speak and the power of god touches people god is not a magician you can fake power you can't fake his presence you can borrow revelations here and there you must have a track record are you ready to pray our time is gone find a corner for yourself in the next five minutes we are going to blast in the spirit instrumentalists help us we are going to pray just find a place alone for god's sake with god cry your heart this night to god and say father something is wrong i need stability in my life lift your voice and pray Mandas kata bahasan nama kata, segete kete kete, embrakatos ko para kato segete, nante kas ko matan deshe nekata. There is something wrong, oh God. I don't have a personal encounter with you. Help me, oh God. Today I think I'm born again. Tomorrow I'm not sure again. I need a personal encounter. Pray. Shamala kato shabaka. Embrados, Ropeke, Toshke, Lakatos, 
Pray. Give me a personal encounter, a personal encounter, a personal encounter in the name of Jesus. Pray. Pray, pray outside. Make sure you are praying. You are following online. Pray. Lord, restore my values. Restore my foundational values. Restore my foundational values. Restore it. The values I kept when I started with you. The values I kept when you started using me. The values I kept when the anointing started coming upon my life. The values I kept that gave me revelation, influence. Restore, oh God. Restore, oh God. Restore, oh God. You are a man of God here, pray, pray, Lord what am I missing, pray, Lord what am I missing, what has my growth in the spirit taken from my life, what am I missing, what about prayer am I missing, what about fasting am I missing, what about the study of the word am I missing? What about character am I missing? Hallelujah. You are going to pray and say, Father, destroy my life. Anything that will stop me from getting to my place of destiny, lift your voice and cry. Pray! That spiritual circumcision. Hold on to the, the horns of the altar. Pray! Pray! Take it from me, oh God, that this destiny of beauty and glory will emerge. Circumcise me, oh God, with the circumcision of the Spirit. Circumcise my ministry. Circumcise my voice. Circumcise the anointing upon my life. Manta toska barakata, eke toska barakatoske teketia, shabraska tamba sekete. Cut away the flesh. Cut away the flesh. Cut away the flesh. Cut away pride. Cut away loss. Cut away pride. Cut away loss. Cut away the flesh until your glory is seen in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point for tonight, and then we are done. Listen, hold on. There are many things in terms of the supplies of heaven that must reach a believer to add to his stability. The truth is that when your finances is going wrong it can affect your stability are we together there are many of our beloved sisters 
who would have loved God and sat down properly to hear God for their lives but because of the need of their families they are out trying to look for anybody that has the means even if it's not the will of God there are some of you gentlemen here who cannot settle down for one day because you have a lot of needs financial needs family needs there are some of us we will not dare go for a retreat you wouldn't even imagine it because the devil keeps piling up needs we are going to pray and say lord open heavens over my life whatever must be released over my life to give me rest to seek and serve you lift your voice and pray open heavens oh god open heavens open heavens oh god lord solve this financial issue once and for all so that myself and my wife and my children can call upon your name let me birth this pregnancy the bible says and adam knew his wife and she gave birth to Seth. and men began again to call upon the name of the lord what do you need to give birth to that will give you the liberty to again begin to call upon the name of the lord Open heaven, so God. Open heaven, so God. Help my family. Lord, the cry of my father, the cry of my mother, the cry of school fees, the cry of Job is not allowing me to seek you. I prophesy open heavens. I declare open heaven. The power, the powers that fight my possession the powers that fight a release of my blessings that will allow me serve god the lord rebuke you the lord rebuke you poverty the lord rebuke you delay the lord rebuke you failure the lord rebuke you hallelujah just give me one more minute we are still going to pray this prayer there are some of you that need to pray the issue of marriage and children will not let you serve God when you sit down like this all that is coming to your mind is marriage you are going to pray Lord let the marriage come and go so that I can if that's what it means to give me rest some of you is your school fees some of you is your education you sit down and just remember five carryovers. Where do I start from? Are we together? Some of you know favor. You want to go on a retreat if a call comes from your mother. My daughter, my son, can I get something? And you say, mommy, you have come again. You are going to pray. Satan, the Lord, rebukes you. Release that which God has, re has released already into my life so that it will give me rest. Lift your voice and pray. The purpose of the blessing is to give you rest and peace to serve the Lord. Open your mouth and rebuke Satan. Shakatos. Shakatos. I command a release of that anointing that will give you rest in ministry. That anointing that will give you rest in business. Lord, establish my business so that I can have the time to serve you. Lord, establish me. I'm tired of staying in a rented apartment. This rent issue is affecting my time with you. Give me my own space. Give me my own place. Lord, I'm tired of begging for food. It's not allowing me to walk in integrity. In the name of Jesus, let the heavens be open over my daily bread let it not be a concern again pray
Kaşınan Yağmınan Sökün al canına Yanına Kaşınan Yağmınan Yanına Kaşınan Yağmınan Sökün al canına Yanına Kaşınan Sarkin salakuna, yana na, yana na. Sarkin salakuna, yana na. Listen, this prayer you see that I just gave you. I prayed this prayer for this ministry. Listen, I said, Lord, I don't want to be a man of God that will ever manipulate people in church for finances. I want to be a blessing. I don't want to be the man of God that will hold a basket and stand after service and say, come and drop money. What happens to those who don't have it? But if my needs are not met and there are bills in the ministry, it will force me to do it let me tell you this the bible says the rod of the wicked listen shall not fall upon the lot of the righteous why lest they dip their hands there is something that can happen to the righteous that will make them dip their hands in iniquity that's why sometimes we need to pray and say lord open the heavens fast open the heavens fast so that the pressure of ministry does not get to me and now make me to start lying to people and say what god did not say lord open the heavens fast so that that child will come so that it will not lead me to go and meet a herbalist for a child open the heavens fast oh god so that a husband and a wife will come so that i will not have to go and meet someone and do one arranging devilish thing and destroy my life is it all right if you pray that prayer one more time? Lord, open the heavens for the sake of my righteousness, for the sake of your grace, for the sake of my spiritual life. Open the heavens. Open the heavens. Send me help from Zion, oh God. Lord, send me the admission. I don't want to have to do malpractice. Lord, help me graduate. I don't have to call someone to write my exams for me. Lord, give me a job. I don't want to be a prostitute. Lord, I don't want to be an arm robber. I don't want to be a 419 Let your heavens be open. Let me have the resources to take care of my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to go back and listen to this message again and vow that you will be stable in your life. Stability does not just happen. There are forces that make it happen. And you must cry and align with God to make for those forces to happen and then you will be stable. Are we together now? Lift your hands. I pray for you. In the name that is above all names. The kind of encounter that is needed to keep you for Jesus for life. May you have that encounter. The kind of encounter that can make you stand. That even if you are the only Christian in a family of non-Christians. The encounter is too deep for you to think of going back. I release it upon your life. Amen. 
number two i pray for you as you go back may you revisit your foundational values and for those who do not have may god grant you the grace to create values that pertain unto life and godliness in the name of jesus christ every dimension in the body needed for your life that you have ignored either through pride or ignorance i pray for you may your spirit be open to receive those dimensions may your spirit be open to receive those dimensions in the name of jesus and finally i pray for you for those who are overdue for a retreat grace to run for a retreat quick receive it in the name of jesus especially for my dear men and women of god brothers and sisters in the vineyard you are a man of god here and you know you sense you know in your spirit that i am overdue for a retreat please i supply grace for you tonight if you need some resources to put a place together to spend time with god may god release those resources in the name of jesus christ for anyone here who has a problem with genuine fasting and prayer on a consistent basis i pray for you that limitation let it die now in jesus name. for those who love pleasure more than god you love God, but you love your flesh more than him. You would throw God a thousand times to satisfy anything you want. I pray for you tonight. Let that spiritual circumcision happen to you here. Let no sacrifice you have to go through to build your spiritual life be too much for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray finally. Whoever has laughed and mocked the God you serve, I declare that by the evident hand of God upon your life, you will bring every, every speakings, ill speakings of men to judgment in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe I should add this one prayer. If there is anybody in this place whose life is not producing results, the results you know befits one who knows God. I pray for you, whatever needs to shift over your heavens to make you step into a level of provable results, may it happen to you tonight in the name of Jesus. You've never met Jesus. I want to invite you now. Apostles, sincerely, under God, I stand and I lie not. I have not encountered Jesus. You are in the main auditorium. Please keep standing. Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. And you are saying, Apostle, this message tonight was for me. I need to rush to God. I have given my life to God, but things have happened around my life that calls for a rededication if you are in any of these groups please our time is gone overflow three you can walk to your projector stand but overflow one two by the roadside and inside you belong to any of these categories please boldly make your way to the front i would like to pray with you it will be my joy to pray with you god bless you keep coming koinonia appreciate them as they are coming you can't hear a message like tonight and sit down as if it doesn't matter you can't hear a message like the one you have heard tonight and sit down as if it doesn't matter god bless you don't mind who is looking at you just make your way and come young and old it's never too late to know jesus and it's never too late to be serious with him apostle how about me I've been around the things of God, but I'm not exactly sure. Please join them. Join them. I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. I don't do any bad thing I'm aware of, but I'm not born again. Join them. Join them quickly. Koinonia, are you still clapping? God is bringing them. It matters that people turn to righteousness. 
it matters that people love Jesus with all their heart it matters that people seek him with all their heart it's not just the issue of evangelism people must the more we win souls the more God has bodies to manifest his glory God bless you hallelujah praise the Lord now thank you so much if you're joining them please come quickly join them those online if you're online from any nation you can connect as I pray thank you I salute you for your courage to come here some of you have given your life to Christ before some of you are making a renewed decision it doesn't matter no one condemns you I love you with all my heart we love you as a family of faith I want you to lift your right hand and pray this prayer passionately let it be from your heart and let it be genuine those online and overflow three please join us in this prayer say Lord Jesus say it again Lord Jesus I love you tonight I have heard your word I need you desperately in my life I confess that I cannot help myself and I ask Jesus to come into my life Jesus my life is yours and I receive your life in return the grace to walk in victory I receive right now in Jesus name I declare that I'm saved I'm a child of God from today a new journey starts in my life and my destiny please keep your hands lifted Jesus thank you thank you for these precious men and women those outside and those who are making these decisions and those who will be making these decisions many weeks months and years even after now I decree and declare that the keeping grace will keep you in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that you start a new journey by the power of the Holy Spirit I plant in you hunger and passion for God for his glory for his life and for your destiny I declare that the Lord takes away from your life every kind of distraction and he will cause you to know him and love him and out of you will come mighty men and women of God in the name of Jesus I bless you with all my heart in Jesus name I pray thank you so much please follow the lady there's a lady waving her hands there all of you just follow her the overflow three there should be someone waving hands at your back please follow them there will be a group of people to receive you and just talk with you very briefly let's honor them koinonia God bless you God bless you God bless you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.